have a lot of lovely stuff. We're going to have... establish my covenant with you. something like you that are like God, that God, God is all knowing that means he knows everything. everything. He went he knows ahead everything he knows tomorrow and art. Like I'm so silly, silly like, like you're, you're so seen out like you're so guess what? You know you just made all the same right so and never you feel pressure to do the one thing. Never feel like you have to follow others. Never feel Hey guys, it's great to have you here. So, as you know, we have a great lineup for you um, for this service. And first off, we're going to go on to the worship session. Afterwards, we're going to have a great story time from the Bible. And then I'll be back to go through the lesson with you. And then afterwards, we're going to have to do some quiz, right? So listen to every bit of it. Pay attention, engage, give it your best as you always do. And I'll be back to see you. See you soon. Now let's go into a time of worship. Hi everyone. Welcome to Children's Service. We'll be singing Reckless Love by Corey Asbury. Uh, this is a song about how God's love for us continues even when we, uh, we are against it. So I hope that you'll sing with us and praise God while we sing this song.
for our lesson for today. Stories of the Bible, Noah and the Flood. This is Noah. Hey! Noah was a good man who tried to do the right thing. Yeah! But in the time when Noah lived, he was the only man on earth who was doing the right thing. All the other people on earth were doing evil things and hurting each other. This made God very sad. So God said that he was going to send a flood to the earth that would destroy every living thing on earth because he was sorry he ever made them. But God decided to save Noah and his family. God told Noah to build a boat and fill it with two of every kind of animal and bird. Colored, bird, moth, okay, all here. Noah did just that. And then Noah and his whole family boarded the boat and waited for the flood to come. The rain fell hard for 40 days and 40 nights. Water! Water covered the whole earth, and the boat floated safely on the surface. Water covered even the highest mountains on earth, but Noah and his family were saved. God remembered Noah and all the animals on the boat, God sent a wind to blow across the earth, and the flood began to go away. After five months, the boat came to rest on a mountaintop. A few months later, the other mountains could be seen. Forty days later, Noah opened a window and released a raven. The bird flew back and forth until the flood had dried up. He also sent a dove out to see if it could find dry ground. But the dove couldn't find a place to land because there was still water on the ground. So the dove returned to the boat. Oh, hello again. After another seven days, Noah sent the dove out again. This time, it came back with an olive leaf. Oh, good girl. So Noah knew that the flood waters were almost gone. A week later, he sent the dove out again, and it didn't come back. So many months after the flood began, Noah opened the covering of the boat and saw that the ground was drying. He waited two more months, and at last, 
the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, leave the boat, all of you. Release the animals so they can be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. Okay. So Noah, his family, and all the animals finally left the boat. See ya. Noah built an altar to the Lord to make a sacrifice to God. God was pleased with Noah's offering and said to himself that he would never again destroy every living thing on earth. God blessed Noah and his sons and promised them that he would never send another flood. He gave them the rainbow in the sky as a sign of this promise to Noah, his family, and all of mankind. Hey guys, welcome back. So I found that super interesting because now you know the source of rainbows, right? Yeah, so you know why um, um, sometimes when it rains so heavily and then the sun is just, just about to come and then you see the rainbow, different colors, right? I know some of you can actually rain, um, mention all the colors of the rainbow. Um, you should give it a try. I know it with raw edge beef, <laughs> but you can give it a try. So um, that was because the very start of it was when men started to disobey God and God wasn't so pleased. God is never so pleased about sin. And that's really why he came to save us in the first place that's why jesus came to earth but back in those days in noah's time um when men sinned god was fed up and decided that he was going to destroy the whole earth with a flood and it was only one man noah who found grace in god's eyes in in that case he was a man who walked with god he feared god he honored god so even in the midst of all the terrible things that people were doing there was one man who decided to do right so even when others were doing wrong he chose to do right i want you to know that in the midst of you know people may be doing bad things at school people may be doing things that are not so good you can do right right so you don't have to do what others are doing and that was why noah set himself apart and because of that he he was also able to save his family so you see when we choose to do good um in the process our families will be saved they will come under god's protection as well for our own sake and that was how um god told noah to build an ark guys it had never rained before that was the very first time like if you said it's going to rain no one will no one will take you serious because they didn't even know what the rain was because that never rained so guys sometimes god may tell you to do something like build an ark like he told noah but then you're like what you may not understand but god sees father god is all knowing that means he knows everything he knows everything he knows tomorrow he knows yesterday and he knows today so when god tells you to do something you do it you obey and that's exactly what noah did he went ahead and he built an ark like i'm telling you he must have looked so silly like i know when you do the right thing when you choose not to steal or lie at school or try to cut corners your friends will say oh, you're so silly like you're you're chickening out like you're such a you know you're just weak well you're actually pleasing god and guess what there's a reward you'll be saved you and your house if since noah obeyed god he built an ark and everyone's be like what are you on about no rain is coming ain't no flood coming but guess what noah obeyed all the same and he went ahead and guess what the floods actually came and destroyed the whole earth hmm. they should have listened to noah right um so in that moment you know the story now all of the earth was destroyed but noah was saved him and his house and then the animals and all of it but this is the key point god told noah he was going to destroy the earth build an ark noah obeyed noah chose to do right even in the midst of all the wrongdoings you can choose to do right you can choose to obey god and as you do that you save yourself you save your house and because of you others will be blessed right so never feel pressured 
to do the wrong thing never feel like you have to follow others never feel afraid to do what god has called you to do what god tells you to do maybe through your parents through your your siblings through your teachers when god tells you to do something just do it because you god always sees the bigger picture and don't be afraid no flood is ever going to come to destroy the whole earth because god is faithful and he has given us a sign and that sign is the rainbow and so anytime you see the sign of the rainbow remember that there is, is a god who promises and fulfills and so today as you go about your week remember that god is a god who cares a god who sees and god saw noah god sees the good work that you do he sees how you do all the assignments all the lessons all the quizzes he sees how you see and you praise and you worship him and he's excited about it so Keep doing God's will, keep doing good, and God will certainly be pleased with you and save you and your house. Thank you guys for joining. I hope you had an amazing time like I did. See you again next week. Amen. Hey, boys and girls. It's been a while since the last quiz, and I hope you're excited and ready for this week's quiz. As usual, I bring you the answers for last week's homework first. Number one, in Exodus 8, each of these creatures plagued Egypt, except the right answer to that was D, serpents. Two, in Exodus 7, which of these plagues did the Lord not inflict on the Egyptians? The right answer was F food turning into stones the third question from exodus 12 7 and 13 what did the children of israel do to protect their firstborn sons from being killed in the lord's last plague on egypt the answer to that was d smear lamb's blood around the door frame the fourth question from exodus 12 8 which of these food items was not included in the Passover feast? The right answer was A, olives. The fifth question from Exodus 11, 7, true or false? The children of Israel had to suffer from all of the same plagues as the Egyptians did. The correct answer to that was false. The Lord put a difference between the Egyptians and the children of Israel. The sixth question from Exodus 13, 21 to 22. The Lord shows the children of Israel which way to travel in the wilderness by using... The correct answer was C, by using a pillar of cloud by day and of fire by night. The seventh and last question from last week's quiz was from Exodus 13, 18. Through which body of water did the children of Israel pass safely? The right answer to that was D, the Red Sea. A big thanks to Edna for getting all the answers correctly. Thank you, Edna. Now over to this week's questions. The first question from Genesis 5.30. Who was Noah's father? A, Abel. B, Seth. C, Lamech. D, Enoch. If you said Lamech, then you're correct. The next question from Genesis 5.32. Which of these men was not a son of Noah? A, Ham. B, Shem. C, Japheth. D, Canaan. If you answered D, Canaan, then you're correct. The next question is from Genesis 6, 5 to 7. Why did the Lord want to destroy man? A. Man was too smart. B. Man was too wicked. C. Man was too slothful. D. Man was too strong. If you answered B, 
man was too wicked. Then you're correct. The fourth question from Genesis 6, 9. And Noah dash with God. And Noah dash with God. A. Served with God. B. Taught with God. C. Walked with God. D. Ate with God. If you answered C, Noah walked with God, then you're correct. The fifth question is from Genesis 6, 17. How will the Lord destroy mankind? How will the Lord destroy mankind? A. Fire B. Earthquake C. Famine D. Flood If you answer D. Flood, then you're correct. The sixth question is from Genesis 6.14. What kind of wood did Noah use to build the ark? A. Gopher B. Mahogany C. Cedar D. Oak And if you said A. Gopher then you're correct. The next answer, next question is from Genesis 6 14 With what material would Noah coat the ark? A. Ta. B. Grease. C. Animal fat. D. Straw. If you've answered A. Ta, then you're correct. The next question is from Genesis 6.15. What unit of measurement was used to measure the arc? A. Meter B. Cubit C. Far long D. Beam Well, if you've answered B. Cubit, then you're correct. The ninth question is from Genesis 6.16 how many stories high was the ark? A. One story. It was open and spacious. B. Five stories. C. Three stories. D. Seven stories. If you've answered A. One. It was open and spacious. B. 5 C. 3 D. 7 If you've answered C. 3 then you're correct. And the last question. Which humans boarded the ark? A. Noah, Noah's sons, Noah's brothers, and all their wives. B. Noah and his wife and sons. C. Noah, his wife, and Noah's sons and their wives. D. Only Noah. If you've answered C. Noah, his wife, and Noah's sons and their wives then you're correct now let's go over to the home assignment remember to send your answers your correct answers to kidszone at solidrockdoubling.org that's right we have our own email address now kidszone at solidrockdoubling .org. 
first question from Genesis 7 12 how long did it rain a 70 days and nights B 40 days and nights C 80 days and nights D 10 days and nights second question from Genesis 7 24 how long did the water cover the entire earth a 50 days b 40 days c 100 days d 150 days third question from genesis 8 7 what was the first animal that noah let out of the ark a a sparrow b a raven c a pigeon and d a dove the fourth question from genesis 8 8 to 12 how many times did the bird that noah released return to him a o b three c two d one the fifth question from genesis 8 11 the last time the dove returned, what did she have in her beak? A. An olive leaf. B. A white ribbon. C. A small pebble. D. An earthworm. The sixth question from Genesis 8:11. What did the item in the dove's beak signify? A. The land was no longer to be was no longer able to produce life b some parts of the earth were no longer covered with water c some people survived the flood d the lord will never destroy human race again seventh question from genesis 8 20. what did noah do to show his thanks to god a Build a monument on Mount Ararat. B. Make animal sacrifices on an altar. C. Write a psalm to praise the Lord. D. Sacrifice his youngest son. The last question from Genesis 9, 12 to 17. What was the token of the Lord's promise to never destroy humankind again? A. The rainbow. B. The Northern Lights. C. The Eclipse. D. The North Star. Don't forget to send in your answers to kidzone at solidrockdoubling.org. Now let's welcome Kirthy to give us some notices. You guys had an amazing week. We have an announcement for you, so listen carefully. So whoever answers to the questions and sends it on time and uh, sends their homework also on time will receive a special prize. In order to claim your prize, send your answers as well as your homework to admin at solidrockdublin.org. Welcome to Solid Rock Dublin's Children's Church Service.